what can leaders do to create a safer environment for this expression so that there isn't the burnout, there isn't this struggle and suffering going on in the workplace? As you asked that question, what just popped into my mind is, um, so our two boys have been away at summer camp for the first time this summer, like at a sleepaway camp. It's just this funny situation where they can't really communicate with us except on one appointed day. You know, you get like one five minute phone call with them. And my husband's been doing this thing on those at those moments where he'll say like, okay, what's the best thing about camp? Like, t- tell me two great things about camp and one really annoying thing or, or thing you don't like. And I feel like framing it that way gives them the space to open up about the things that they don't like instead of feeling like they only have to give the positive version. And I think that we could be doing something like that when we start those Zoom meetings or whatever it is, you know, instead of like, what's a win, one win you had over the weekend? Like we could be asking, what's something good that happened and, and something that's bothering you right now? Because the idea is really just to normalize those experiences. And then I think also of a conference that I went to once where the organizer, he asked everybody to write down on a piece of paper something that they were struggling with in their lives, like a a real struggle in their lives. And then someone went around and collected all the pieces of paper. And then the host sat quietly on the stage and took this collection of pieces of paper and just started reading them out loud. And you started hearing about everybody's struggles, you know, people dealing with illnesses and and divorces or depression or like whatever it was. And it completely transformed that room and our understanding of each other because until that moment, we had all been a group of smiling faces, you know, one face smiling at another face. And then to understand that actually behind each of those smiling faces was some incredibly profound struggle. And like the evidence was right there on those little slips of paper. To be working in these kinds of exercises is an invitation to greet each other in in a little bit more of a real way. And again, this is about the bittersweet, not just about the bitter. So we need the invitations also to open up to each other, like about the great things that are happening, you know, the, the joys and the victories that we might be too embarrassed to talk about. Like it might seem like bragging. And I think as leaders, that ability to share your own struggles too, to lead by that example too, you know, many times leaders feel like they can't drop that cape. They can't show that they're Clark Kent and they're human and they have these other experiences. They have to just show the superhuman ability to stay positive, stay optimistic and focus on that. When in actuality, there are struggles even at the highest levels of leadership that we're often blind to and we're trying our best to understand and recognize them. But it's that connection piece that I think is just so important that creates the space for that vulnerability to come after the meeting and be honest. Maybe you don't want to announce it in the full Zoom room that you have that struggle, but to open up that opportunity for a coffee break or something to share, hey, I'm going through it or I've been through it and, and relate on that level. I think it's just another important piece as the workplace communication of this often doesn't give us that ability for emotional agility. It forces us into this box to pretend that everything's okay until we get to that state of burnout where we can't do this anymore. 